Greetings and salutations. This is Abe Abdelhadi with The Bitter Truth, where we may not have all the answers, but we're going to ask an awful lot of questions. And those of you that uh, want to become a bitter pill, you can by visiting patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. And you can join in and be a bitter pill and uh, have a better life. We're going to be adding more perks uh, next month for sure. I'm, very, I'm excited about that. And uh, you'll be posted on that kind of stuff. But uh, more importantly, tonight, um, I'm very excited to have on a friend of the show, Sima Hernandez. Uh, you know her as the woman who got a quarter million dollar votes on $4,000 in Texas against Beto O'Rourke in the primaries. And uh, they've been, um, you know, banding about some ideas since the primaries. And she has been a force to be reckoned with. She has uh, marched in the Poor People's Campaign. She's been heavily, heavily involved in that in that uh, organization. And just I'll let her talk. We're going to talk about a lot of things today. But um, anyway, uh, Sema, are you there? I'm here. Thank you for having me. And I, I listen to your show and I share all of the links that are available. Oh my so God. You can hear what the bitter truth is all about. I'm going to cry. Okay. Well, you know, tell these people to actually subscribe because I, I, I get a lot of that, but then they don't have habits like subscribing or commenting. Even if they're going to say I'm an asshole, I'll, I'll live with it, but just at least comment. Bad, bad publicity is good publicity. <laughs> And that, folks, is the bitter truth. Yeah, and, that, and there, there, there you go. That's the bitter truth. So, t- so uh, let's talk. So, um, first of all, well, how you how you been since we talked last? What you you've been running around? I know you, I, I saw you in D.C. I saw you down in Houston. I mean, you've been doing a lot of stuff with the ICE offices and all that kind of thing. What's what's been going on? Oh yeah, I've been uh, of course working on behalf and, and organizing on behalf of the Poor People's Campaign here in Texas. I am the co-chair for the state of Texas. Um, organizing against the ICE detention centers, we have a few members um, in Dallas and Austin and Brownsville. What's going on in Brownsville is something that not a lot of people want to talk about because now it's no longer uh, politically convenient to talk about detention centers and, ch- and child separation without someone demanding to abolish ICE. Uh, what's going on down there is atrocious, it's disgusting, and there are reports that are coming from uh, asylum seekers in Mexico that... They have to pay to be at the top of the list to be at the bridge, hmm. and they give them 15 days. And if those people don't get across that bridge in 15 days, then they are the first ones to be deported. And they paid to be on the list. So it's kind of a pay-to-play type of deal to get through first. Wow. And uh, the American Immigration ICE Border Patrol blocks people on the bridge, which is, of course, illegal, but the country has now gone into violating international law and asylum rights uh, for people that are seeking asylum in this nation. Wow. Um, when, you, when, you, when you say pay, who are they paying? They are paying Mexican immigration. Okay. So and, people from South and Central America crossing over into Mexico, mm-hmm. if they have money, $200 is what they request so that they can... Uh, get through to to the United States border without any obstacles. So it's supposed it's supposed to just clear the way. Two hundred bucks clears the way. Mexican immigration, the government of Mexico, correct? Yes. Okay, they take care of it, and you're supposed to just kind of get in and then start talking to the U.S. government and start handling all of your issues. Correct. Okay. Yes, and the United States blocks people at the bridge and keeps them waiting for over fifteen days. Hmm. And if you don't make it across the border in 15 days, they send you right back to where you came from. And now, apparently, uh, Trump has been proposing uh, to pay the Mexican immigration to deport people from South America and Central America back to the countries that where they never make it to the border here in the United States. Wow. And there's people coming from everywhere. So we're, t- we're talking uh, Sri Lanka from Africa, from, of course, Cuba. They're coming in through Mexico because they can no longer go through um, Miami. The, what is it? Dry foot, wet foot law no longer applies to them anymore. Mm. So they're coming in through different ways. Cambodia. People coming in from Cambodia through Mexico for, wow. for asylum. Okay, so, so, it, so it, to, to back up a second, so it's not just quote-unquote Latino Guatemalans or correct. people from Nicaragua. It's it's anywhere that they're facing it, you know, murder. I mean, a lot of these people are seeking asylum, and that's something I've been running back and forth with a lot of these folks. They keep thinking that I'm falling for some story. I go, no, dude, I'm not talking about MS-13 guys. I'm talking about people that are trying to escape where they're from for a real asylum. Is that is, and that you're saying that's not just Central and South America? Correct. It's it's a, a global um, migration of people coming this wow. way. Wow. 
And, of course, with the NDAA they keep passing in Congress, it keeps um, uh, beefing up our border security. And you, they, you know with the recent reports that FEMA money got diverted to ICE instead of being diverted to help uh, places like Texas and Florida and Puerto Rico recover after the hurricanes that passed through there and devastated the people there. Right. So, I mean, what, what that goes to show you that this government, this particular president, this administration cares more about keeping people out and um, demonizing people of color, people from different nations. Um, well, well, so did, but so, but so did the last, but so did the last three administrations, and, and, and uh, Bush and Obama were were notorious for that crap. I mean, it, oh no, this is true. This is absolutely true. But it's never been so much in our face and reported so much like it is now. Well, it's because Trump is ugly. That's why. Because well, Trump is Trump denying it. Yeah, that's that's he's he, he. The opposite effect is happening that I wanted to have happen. I, I was hoping mm-hmm. that he was get, when he won. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, now people start paying attention. All this crap we've been doing for the last. 50 years, 60 years, 80 years, and mm-hmm. the opposite's happening. It's become a burlesque show. It's become, you know, like I rarely watch regular news. And so, like, you know, before I left to run errands to come here, I thought, well, I'll turn on CNN and do my homework a little bit. And it was all Kavanaugh and the sexual harassment thing. I'm like, Jesus, yeah. God, like, you're not talking, they, they don't talk about anything that isn't just pornographic. It's got to be just this prurient, you know, American gladiators bullshit. And, it's not what I thought would happen is not happening. People are not paying attention to what you're saying right now. No, and they're not. And the unfortunate thing about it is that as everyone is getting distracted by what's going on in DC, there are wars that are being funded and people that are leaving their homes and uh, natural disaster after natural disaster, displacing people and they're seeking refuge in places where they think they will be safe only to find out that they've been blocked out of the United States where, you know, we, we are considerably safer than other places. But in reality, if you're black or you're brown and you're not wearing a badge, you are targeted all the time. No, you listen. Of the you, racism in our society. You're absolutely correct. Listen, I'm, I'm reading Matt Taibbi's book for the second time, a uh, book called Divide, which I recommend everybody to read. And it, he, mm-hmm. he it's, the, it's an entire book on the two tier justice system that we have in this country. And mm-hmm. it's Absolutely. it's brutal. It's brutal. And and Matt Taibbi is a great writer. He's a great he he he's the only guy at Rolling Stone worth anything. The rest of them are all just a bunch of corporate sycophants. He's the only one that like speaks truth to power. I have no idea why he still has a job, but he does. And this book Divide um, gets into all of that. It gets into how you know there, there's just flat out a two. You know why why is a black kid in Rikers you know barely coming to trial after three years for having two joints in his backpack, having lost his job and all this other kind of stuff. And, and, and not one banker was prosecuted. You know, right. it's, it's, well, a- it, it's exactly what's, what's happening in Dallas right now. I mean, it happens everywhere across the country, but right now what's getting the attention in Texas is the Dallas shooting of that police officer entering a, her supposed wrong apartment. Right. And shooting. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, shooting him. And she's out within an hour after being arrested for manslaughter. Right. For manslaughter in an hour. And here we have nine people arrested for a nonviolent protest, shutting down the freeway in Dallas, Texas. Right. And they are still in jail. Right. They're still in jail. And the bail is paid. Their lawyers are there. And they are still behind bars. That's the two-tier justice system. She's white. And she's a police officer. Right. Already she has two privileges in her favor. Right. Right down, right down to them, people. right down to them trying to find some drug bullshit in his apartment. You're like, really? That's injustice. Absolutely. That's immoral. Absolutely. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. No, I mean, so, uh, so okay, so, um, de- okay, so dealing with 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 all of this, what we we're just talking about, and you know, I know, I, I saw your, I saw your endorsement letter of of, of uh, Better O'Rourke uh, online, mm-hmm. and. You know, I, I, you know, I, I was curious, and I know that we're, we're talking some more things tonight too. But um, so, tell me a little bit about how that came about, and because I wanted to talk a little bit about his record. I mean, I know he's up and down a little bit. I mean, a lot of things he votes with Ted Cruz on. I mean, he's just not a Christian jihadist who's you know a total idiot. But yeah, we've discussed it before. Yeah. certainly that he he votes like Cruz, and I think I even said I think he's prettier than Cruz. Um, and he played bass in a punk band. He votes like Cruz. He's only prettier. Right. Uh, 
but I have been keeping in communication with him and his campaign, trying to get him to um, adopt some of our platform issues. Because he does talk about the issues, but they're nowhere on his platform that he says he's going to do. Right. So going back and forth and trying to figure out the best way to support him by trying to get him to the left. And like I said, dragging him, kicking and screaming. Um, I finally went ahead and, and put a letter together after I spoke with him. I spoke with his campaign manager that he will not sign H.R. 676, which is a Medicare for All bill. Will not? In the House. He will not, but he will sign uh, Senate Bill 1804, Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill. And I said, if that's all he's willing to give me, then that's pretty much all I, all I can endorse him on. But I still need him to address all of these other issues that are important to all of us, not just in the state of Texas, but across the country, given the, in the, in the situation that we're in. Um, not just for us, but in order to win, like to truly win in Texas, he has to continue addressing and talking about and pushing legislation for these issues. Well, and and, 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 what's, house, and, real, and, and real quick, what's the number of the second bill you said, HR, the Bernie bill with the uh, for the, the prescription drugs? What, 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 which one was that? Okay. Uh, Senate bill 1804. 1804. And, and, okay. But this gets to the other part I was going to say. It, it sounds because his, and I was going to ask you about his armed services record, his veteran affairs record. We're talking about health care now, so let's just talk about that now. But it just does. It just sounds like he's your typical corporate Democrat wonk. I mean, I've looked at his voting record before I interviewed you the first time, and then and then you know yesterday and a little bit today, I looked I, I looked up some more stuff, and you know he took the snap challenge, you know, where him and his buddies in 2013 ate snap food for you know a month, living on 450 a day or whatever that is, and yeah. you know did, okay, so if you have any empathy and you know how that feels, what the fuck? I mean, so. You know, it, it, that's kind of where, I, like, like, and 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 I'm like you, I'm sure, where you 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 say a bad thing about them and people get all pissed off because they're they're thinking with their lizard brain, their bird brain, right? And they want to just believe he's a Democrat, so he must be good. It's like, well, okay, I know Ted Cruz is reprehensible because he's kind of like a Christian jihadist. That's my name for him, and mm-hmm. uh, like he's. Yeah, but the other guy votes just like him, so really, you're getting down to who you like better. What's he going to do for in us? What's he going to do? What's <laughs> say that again? As as personality wise, yeah, because like, people are not considering voting record. Yeah, I've I've had my um, my discussions with him, and I've talked to him, and you know, I've I've been very brutal with him and telling sure. him that he, I don't think that he will do what he said he's going to do because he doesn't understand. He doesn't live our lives. He said he was born lucky, and I said, you know, you were born privileged because you made your family made a living off of the oppression and the uh, uh, what is it called the, the prison uh, industrial complex which his father if I'm not mistaken helped set up the first jail in in El Paso oh I didn't know that yeah they're in, they're in the uh, private so there's, wait there's, they're in the private prison business I think no they were I'm not sure if they are now but that's from the history that I found from his Ooh, father wow. whenever I, he was judged I know that okay so when I when I say you're born privileged, I'm like you need to recognize your privilege and how it's it's uh it's part of the capitalist colonialism white supremacy mentality. Right. And once you address it, you're able to um to change it because if you don't acknowledge past mistakes, you're doomed to make them again. Right. And in my talks with him, he has a terrible voting record. One that's that that I don't think people like myself would be proud of as a progressive, but I'm hoping that everything that he says, people will hold him accountable to it because we can always do a playback. We can always say, this is what you said on this day. Right. You may have not written it, but you said it. Well, see, but that's, and, but, but that's the thing with, I mean, but, but then nobody will care because when Obama broke every single promise he made in 2008, nobody cared in 12. You know what I mean? Well, it, it, remember, not a lot of people cared. I mean, we care now to make sure that we don't end up with another Trump presidency in 2020. So we have to hold them accountable. And that's, in my letter, you see that at the bottom where, even though I'm endorsing him, it's on him to earn every single vote and earning our trust that he will follow through on these issues. We'll see. And <coughs> real quick, I was going to ask you, so um, have you ever discussed veterans affairs with him? I have. What, what, where is he on that? Because his voting record's horrible on that. 
Well, um, the last time I discussed Veterans Affairs with him was just a week prior to him voting for the NDAA that gave an additional $717 billion to uh, the Trump administration to do as they please. And I told him before he voted for it, before you go and give more money away, you're already justifying that you're going to use this for veterans. I said, you need to earmark that money. You need to make sure that money makes it to the hands of the veterans, their families, to the VA system, into programs that will help transition them from combat life to civilian life. And he said, okay, I will see what I can do. A week later. It's a cop out. I'll, I'll see what I can do. That's like, it's like, it's like, that. it's like the Trader, it's like the Trader Joe's managers out of rock shrimp. I'll see what I can do. Well, this is this is my conversation with him, and I told him I said you need to understand, and I'm pretty sure you already do, that every time you vote for the NDAA, you're voting to destabilize other nations, which causes not just global warming, you cause a mass migration of people coming to the United States seeking asylum, only to be blocked by the Muslim ban and be blocked at the border because we're not letting people in this country. By the by the way, real you're quick. By, by the way, by, by the way, real quick, folks that don't know, the NDAA is the National Defense of America Act which was uh, passed with Patriot Acts 1 and 2, which is always up for review and renewal. When Obama signed it in 2011, he added the gutting of habeas corpus. So now we have no habeas corpus for American citizens. Bush did that for enemy combatants in 2005. And people confuse that all the time. They'll say, well, Bush did that, not Obama. Ah, Bush did it in 2005 for enemy combatants. Obama did it on New Year's Eve 2011 and gutted habeas corpus, which means... If the president of the United States does not like you or me or anybody or thinks that we're terrorists just by virtue of our print or whatever, they can just put us in jail without charge indefinitely like, like Guant- Guantanamo Bay. American citizens can be treated like a Guantanamo Bay prisoner. And that's exactly Correct. what – And that's what's happening. And, and he's actually been beefing that up. Well, yes, and that's, that's my discussion with him is every time that that happens, there is a ripple effect. And that causes people come to the border, coming to the borders, and then their families are separated. I said, so you yourself are initiating this chain reaction when you're voting for it. If you're on the Armed Services Committee and you're putting this budget forward, you need to put it in that you will allocate a hell of a lot of money to the veterans because I know that the veterans that are out here do not have what they need. There's 20 veterans committing suicide per day because they're not getting the, the, the health and mental health checkups that they need and they're living out on the streets or they're homeless or they have a substance abuse addiction. Right. They cannot find work. There are things that we can do to help our veterans that we're not doing now, but instead we're just writing a blank check to continue military intervention or military instigation in other countries that they don't need our help. Right. Well, we're in eight wars right now. Eight useless, unwinnable wars. And nobody seems to mind. Yeah. But God damn it, if you kneel if you kneel at the football game, it's the end of the world. That, that's exactly what it is. There's definitely um, someone else is in control. <laughs> well, hey, listen, we're a corporatocracy. This is what – we don't have an opposition party. This is where – with people like Beto and, and, and my friends that are you know, always trying to tell me, well, you, know, you want too much too fast. Listen, Lincoln passed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863. We were still hanging black guys till the 1970s with Jim Crow in full effect and in some places till the 1990s. So when does incrementalism when, – when do you just get sick and tired of incrementalism and just blow it out and say, fuck it, why can't we have nice things? Right, and that's, that's something that I have discussed with him, with several other people, with um, different uh, civil rights leaders that I, I had the, um, the honor of meeting during my time in D.C. with the Poor People's Campaign, um, just with the recent uh, national convening that we had in Maryland with – uh, about 200 people from 40 different states representing their organizing committees. And we were talking about the same things that we're talking about now, systemic racism, militarization, health care, the war on poverty. We're talking about all these things in the Poor People's Campaign. So everything that I, that I campaigned on in my initial campaign for U.S. Senate, we are still campaigning on with the Poor People's Campaign. And now as I'm transitioning and phasing out of my role, as a Texas co-chair for the Poor People's Campaign because I'm running for United States Senate. Again, we have to continue addressing these issues, putting them forward. One of the things that... Um, and to be clear, and to be clear, you're running for in 2020. Uh, correct. Cor- Cornyn's seat is up. 
Yeah, okay. Senator John Cornyn's seat is up, mm-hmm. and I am running to unseat him, and it's going to be something <laughs> fabulous, I think. Because um, I had this discussion with a few people while I was in D.C. with, with David Goodman, who is the uh, founder, and um, he's the recipient of the Medal of Honor uh, during the Obama years. Um, and he's also, he, he's, a, he's the president of the Andrew Goodman Foundation, which, which is a, a civil rights organization that helps register people to vote and get them to the polls. And they do amazing work. And I've gone in contact with him. I've gone in contact with Ro Khanna. Ro Khanna reached out to me a few weeks ago. Sweet. Um, yeah, no, it, it was out of the blue. I wasn't expecting it. Uh, but he definitely said that he endorsed that tool of work and he wanted to get to know me and what I was about because he's heard a lot of great things about me. So I said, okay, you know, let's, let's see what we can work on. And we talked about why I had not endorsed O'Rourke, what I stand for, what our campaign stood for. Um, he talked about uh, the Medicare for All caucus and that he would like my input in, um, in that situation to make sure that the integrity of H.R. 676 is maintained in the House. And that um, we continue to to keep pushing it forward and not let it get diluted. So he's asking me for my input, for my um, advice with this bill, pushing it forward in Congress. And I'm not even in Congress. Right. So, but that's you're a player. Listen, but is, but don't be humble either. You're a player because I mean, look, Nina Turner. God bless her heart. I love her to pieces, and I would vote for her if she ran for president. But she's never been anything higher than like a state senator in Ohio. But she gets out there. She marches. United States senator. I'm sorry. She was a United States senator of Ohio. Right. Oh, I thought she was just a state senator of Ohio. Okay. Still, it's like I mean, and 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 then she one term and that was it. And now she's you know out and on you know out and marching and doing all these things. Um, you know, you haven't even held office yet, and you're garnering a quarter million votes, and you're getting out there, and you're getting arrested, and you're you're standing for what you believe in. That's going to get people's attention. And so that's the. Well, it's a threat. It's definitely a threat to the patriarchy. Pardon me, say that again. I said, I said, people like me are a threat to the patriarchy. Well, because of, because here's the thing: it's it's empire, and we're in the death rattles of empire right now. No one, we're 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 going down the checklist right now. We are going down the checklist of everything that has ended the Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, the British Empire, mm-hmm. the Russians in in, in the eighties. Um, it, 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 we are going down the, the, the line of, of everything that is, um, not, uh, you know, um, g- good for the country and we're expanding. Our wars are expanding. We're not, uh, we're, we're not investing in the, we got a D plus infrastructure in the world right now among industrialized nations that we're not spending any money and God forbid we have a jobs program. FDR was the last guy to do that. And he put on, mm-hmm. he put twelve million twelve million Americans to work. You know, this guy's not going to do it. Obama didn't do it. Bush didn't do it. I mean, there's just not they're, they're they're slaves. We don't have an opposition party. We don't have an anti-war, pro-labor, pro-worker party anymore. We have one big corporatocracy gangbang. That's what we have. Yeah, and to the point that I I have not held office yet. I will. I know you will, but. In continuing to to talk about these issues, bringing them front and center in front of people, letting them know why these things are important, why we have to have policies that will help this country succeed, and for us as people to thrive in this society rather than uh, continuing to to give tax breaks to the millionaires and billionaires of this country who are not paying their fair share and putting the burden on us, everyday working Americans. Some of us are still, you know, living in our cars. Some of us don't even have a, a place to, to actually eat, uh, barely making ends meet, rationing food, rationing our medication. Sure. Uh, we, we have to continue to talk about these issues and put them front and center and don't let it get lost in what is the pornography of this, 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 of this administration and of this society and of this media. Well, and that's... And the, working... Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, your turn. No, no, I was going to say, uh, no, no, you're, ab- you're absolutely correct. The pornography of the media, that, this is what we're living in. And as a quick side note, Nina, Nina Turner was an Ohio state senator, not a state senator for the United States. Just, just double checking. Um, uh, ah, okay. But, but, but my uh, point is, is you're kicking ass is my original point. Um, but, but here's the thing. It's like we, we've got a country right now where 50% of Americans make under 30 grand a year. 
And you'll see the you know you see these idiots will get will when you know the stock market's rallying. I'm like, really? Yeah, maybe because of the tax cut at the end of the year, all these companies are buying back their stock, which drives the price up, which drives bonuses up for the C level guys. We're not benefiting since the Great Depression up until Obama and even Clinton and Bush. Any recovery that we've gone through has been enjoyed by seventy percent of Americans. Under Obama. Only 1% of the people benefited from the recovery. And if you look at places like Michigan, Detroit, Michigan, Anderson, Indiana, I mean, you could just check off the cities. They're destroyed. They're gone. And we're not doing anything about it to bring any jobs back or create another industry. I mean, solar is screaming to be done in America. You can't have the quality control overseas that we can here. You just can't. I got I, my employee, my, do, my day job is employee benefits. I have a couple of companies that that's what they do. You can't guarantee that level of quality in airless room with hazmat suits and not a speck of dust on any of these solar chips or panels that are, you know, processing. Uh, it, it's ruined. You'll, you'll lose three thousand dollars in a second if a speck of dust hits those things while they're still drying out. Right? You can't guarantee that overseas. You can't guarantee that quality overseas. And those are jobs that we screaming to be done. Like eighty, we we keep crying about eighty thousand coal jobs in this country. You think really coal guys are loyal to coal? Well, I mean, that's 80,000 coal jobs, but we're, we're talking about 140 million people living in poverty. Right. Well, that, I mean, yeah, I'm just, I'm just talking about 80,000 coal jobs, but those 80,000 coal guys would gladly work in a solar factory that's clean and with health insurance and everything else. And that we got 140 million people living in poverty. If we were to create other industries and or put some of those folks to work with a federal mm-hmm. jobs program, that would solve a lot of our problems. Well, definitely. And that's. That's what we have to continue working on, working with these organizations like the Andrew Goodman Foundation, who's working on ending the voter suppression laws, working with congressmen like Rokana that are that don't want to see HR 676 diluted. I want to work with people who are going to say what they mean and mean what they say. Right. And that's that's what I look forward to and who I look forward to working with and and continuing to push those bills and pushing that information out to the people that they need to be informed and stay on top of these issues and making sure that whomever is elected in office, whether it's a Republican, Democrat, independent, libertarian, it does not matter to hold them accountable, to make them work for you. And that is what we need to, to ultimately for us to have the power that obviously we probably never had. It was just the illusion that, you know, it's, it's our vote, but uh, we need to definitely make it our vote through policies and through education um, and keeping people engaged, not through the the media porn of the Trump administration, but through actual actually talking about the issues that matter. And that's you see the ratings dropping for all the media out there 100%. because people are just disengaged. Right. Right. Like they're numb to it. Like they don't want to hear it anymore. They don't want to hear it. Well, let me ask you. I mean, and so they drop off. OK, so when you guys were running in the primary. Uh, Chucky, uh, mm-hmm. Chucky, uh, Chuck Schumer, <laughs> keep calling him Chucky. Chuck Schumer, uh, came down and, and, you know, campaigned for Beto. To me, that was just the kiss. Of, to me, that was a kiss of death. Um, mm-hmm. you know, Chuck Schumer ain't coming down for, for progressives. Chuck Schumer didn't do shit for Cynthia Nixon in New York. Chuck Schumer is, you know, not, not your friend. Nancy Pelosi, Mitch McConnell, you earn a hundred million dollars in the Senate and the Congress. They are not your friend. Okay. So mm-hmm. earn, I, I use that word loosely, but. So how how confident are you that Beto is Robert O'Rourke? God damn it. You know, he can't even get into the Hispanic Congressional Caucus. You know why? He ain't Hispanic. It's for actual Latino peoples that are Congress people. Mm-hmm. That's the Hispanic Caucus, like the Black Caucus. I can't get into the Black Caucus if I was a congressman. You know why? Little technicality. I'm not black. That's how that works. It's called the Black Caucus for a reason. He wanted to get in the Hispanic Caucus because he re- represents a bunch of Hispanics. And they're going, yeah, that's cool. But yeah, you, but you, this is about heritage here. Sorry. And maybe it sounds racist, whatever. But the point is, is he's running on this Beto shit. And I, t- I know a ton of people who think he's Mexican. They think his mother's Mexican. You know, and I'm going, no, his name's Robert Ork. Robert Francis. And they're not, none of them. Ain't none of them Latino. But all that to say that, Chuck Schumer came down for him. He's, yeah. the, you know, he's their boy. How confident are you that he's going to enact some of these things that you endorsed him on? Because I want to talk about your race now. But 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 how how confident are you that he's going to not pull a total one eighty once he gets in there? And you, all of a sudden, you're Frank Sinatra in the JFK administration. 
well, here's the thing is we can't trust anyone to do what's right. And we, that's why we have to continue to be engaged and uh, hold their feet to the fire. Hell, light them all on fire, uh, so to speak, but not like literally do it, but figuratively and, and threaten their jobs. Um, we have to hold them accountable. I, I cannot honestly say that I can trust anyone in Congress now running for office um, or running for re-election until I've seen the voting record and actually see that they are following through with what they said. So for me, it's just I'm hopeful, but I'm cautious because every time that we put our full trust in a candidate, they end up um, failing us. So I've learned through life, through lessons, not to trust um, until we see some action. Until we see some action, then gain our trust. But I, I don't. I'm hopeful, but I'm cautious. And as, as for me, I haven't changed <laughs> in, um, in the way I talk about things and what I believe in. My platform has not changed. Um, that's something that I'm not going to do and I'm not going to change any. In fact, I'll probably add to it that I definitely won't remove language that will make people doubt where I stand on the issues. Of course. And what I will get done. Of course. No, that's uh, because then you're like everybody else. Correct. You're, like every, and you're like everybody else. I mean, and, and, and what made me so mad about the Cynthia Nixon thing in New York was, I don't know if you knew this, but a few days before the election last week, and of course, Andrew Cuomo had no idea that this you know went down. But some letters, not some, letters went out to all the voters in New York that Cynthia Nixon was anti-Semitic and didn't like Jews. And it's interesting because she's Jewish. Uh, and her two of her kids were, were bar mitzvahed in the last couple of years and goes to synagogue. So kind of really hard to say she's anti Semitic. And they did it. And the letters went out and they pulled all kinds of shenanigans, voter suppression, a bunch of DNC voter suppression crap, the same thing as in 16 with Bernie. And you're just like, God damn it, these guys can't play straight to save their ass. And they think you don't know. They think the voter is stupid. So, I mean, like, and I want to talk to – okay, let's let's talk about your race now because – so you're going to run 2020 for Senate. I, I just have one thing to ask because <clears throat> you got a quarter million votes in Texas and most of them mo- most of them were down in the south. They were down in RGV. They were down in El Paso. They were down – you know, they were down in Laredo. They were down in your area. You would cr- – 42 you, counties. I'm sorry? 42 counties in the state of Texas. Okay, yeah. And so – but you, but you cru- you would crush the rep you would crush the house in a minute whoever's running um you know if Silvestri Reyes wanted to come back or whoever i mean you know Ben Mendoza it doesn't matter you would kick their ass you would kick their ass and be a you would be a representative in a second why are you compelled to run against Cornyn because i'm you know i'm like no one else has announced but you know i'm, I'm thinking the Castro brothers you know uh, those guys are you know, died in the wool DNC. Um, what is making you want to run against Cornyn? Okay, well, obviously, I did well for a first-time candidate in the primary. Amazing. Um, thank you. That though is the nominee. You know, O'Rourke is the nominee to continue that race. I'm focusing on 2020 um, again because it's a Senate position, and I could run for Congress. But I don't want change to be implemented just for my congressional district. Uh, I want it for my state, for the entire country and the entire um, world, I guess you could say. Okay. <laughs> I will say it. Okay. I could run for city mayor. I could run no, not for mayor. Council. No, no, no. I'm, talk- I'm talking about House of Reps. Director. I'm talking about I'm talking about a, 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 Right. Yeah. No. But, yeah. But people have told me, why don't you run for a smaller race? Eh. And I get it because I probably could win. Uh, but. My my agenda, our our vision, our platform, what what I have been running on is implementing this change for everyone. And I know that I could have a voice in Congress, but I feel like my um, my work, my agenda would be better implemented for the United States Senate. And it's just Cornyn is awful. Um, if Oh, let's see if for some reason someone like the, you know, the Castro twins, um, Julian and Joaquin Castro were to run, I, I would be one very upset. I really would. Because I know how that, how that goes. I know automatically the Texas Democratic Party is going to embrace them and is going to support them because that was the case this last election. And let's just say they have not called me. They have not invited me anywhere. They have not 
congratulated me. There has been no communication from the Texas Democratic Party at all whatsoever. You're not surprised by that. And Cornyn, no, I'm not surprised. Okay. Cornyn is awful. He's not as bad as Cruz, but policies, he supports the same policies Absolutely. as Cruz. Absolutely. And to continue to have someone like that in Congress, that uh, from what I'm understanding, Mitch McConnell wants John Cornyn to take his place in the U.S. Senate. That's something we cannot have. Right. Like we have to get rid of those people that may lead this country into a total disaster than it already is now. Right. And and he's pushing for this nomination of Kavanaugh. He was pushing for the nomina- nomination of uh, Gorsuch. He continues to enable these policies and continues to embolden the um, Republican Party. And that's something that we cannot have. He may not be as awful as Ted Cruz, but he's just a big enough. Threat. Well, listen, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not arguing with you on that at all. I just don't know if you understand, though, that the Democratic Party would rather lose with a corporate wonk than win with you. You know that, right? I am aware of their history, and I am seeing an uprising from people here on the grassroots level that have all the qualities of the leadership that are needed, at least in the, in the local chapters, the precincts, and the counties of the Democratic Party. The problem is, is at the top of the Democratic Party, whether it's the DNC or the Texas Democrats, they are the ones that are catering to the corporate wonks. The people out here doing the work of the door knocking and the phone banking, the ones doing all the grunt work are the ones that need to be in those positions of leadership to shift the party where it needs to go to. I don't know if that's going to happen by 2020 or 2024 or, you know, it'll happen. It'll happen if they can work for you. Well, and also vice versa, because I'm here to work for the I people, get that, but uh, and I don't, I'm, I'm not I'm talking. I'm not talking about this like you know, you're some plantation owner. I'm just saying, if they come and work for your campaign and to help you win the nomination, that's what mm-hmm. you're saying. That's when what you're saying is going to be uh, relevant, because the upper guys they want to crush you. They want to crush Cortez. They want to. They they don't dig progressives. They 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 got their way with Cynthia Nixon. And everyone's like, oh well, Andrew Cuomo raised eight hundred or eight million. He raised eight and a half million dollars. He took eight and a half million dollars in bribes. Are you fucking kidding me? The the, the guy the guy votes Republican on everything. He is tax cut up the ass. I mean, the guy is he's 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 awful. And his dopey brother on TV is just the guy's a. If it wasn't for Cuomo genetics, that asshole would not even have a job. It, it, how he has a TV show, after, yeah. How he has a job after he's saying, "Don't read the WikiLeaks, you guys. It's illegal. Only us reporters can read the WikiLeaks." Are you fucking out of your mind? Guess what? I can, idiot. I'm not hacking into the computers. I'm reading it after the fact. I can do whatever I want. Right, and there, there's definitely something wrong with with the patriarchy, which is why I say mm-hmm. they're threatened by women in general, specifically progressive women and women of color. They're threatened by us. Oh, and and they try to keep us out. They try to push us out by saying that we are not qualified. Well, how come a man is not asked about his qualifications after he served two terms as city council, three terms as a uh, house rep, and then now he's running for U.S. Senate? I'm like, how, how is that? How do you not question that? And why is it that you question my, uh, I'm speaking for myself, where they tell me to go and stay home? I'm like, you're a Democrat. You're a woman. You're telling me as another woman to stay home because you want me to leave space open for a man to run? I'm like, what kind of backwards thinking is that? I thought we were supposed to be leading this country forward, being progressive, having women take charge because here we were supporting Hillary Clinton in 2016, right? Mm-hmm. But somehow me, because I'm brown, because I'm a woman, because I'm a mom, and I don't have any political experience, I'm not qualified. So no, it's because I'm a woman of color and I am a mother and I was a baseball coach and I understand what life is about, that I am qualified. In fact, I'm overqualified because I know what should take priority and what is important. And to me, what's important is the lives of all these other people that are working just as hard as, you know, as us to keep this country afloat instead of catering to the corporate interests of this government. So that's backwards thinking. That's not putting the people first. No, but that's, that's, the, D- that's the DNC, man. That, that, that's the DNC and has been since the 80s, at, at least, if not the late 70s, after they were over McGovern and Carter. And they just dis- dis- decided to invent superdelegates and do all this crap. It's just 
they, they listen in, in boxing. You don't fix the winner, right? The, the, the guy who's paid, they're paid to lose. They're paid to lose and go, whoops, hey, you know, two weeks ago before Labor Day weekend, they they passed through 15 federal circuit court judges for Donald Trump because they all wanted to go home two days early for the Labor Day weekend. They didn't want to bother with it. So Chucky the Shoom went in there and just, you know, yeah, laid down like he like they always do. Uh-huh. And they, they lay down. They don't. They don't fight. They don't fight. The fact that Kavanaugh got this far is a joke. McCain was sick. They had a fifty to forty nine Senate count. You're Chuck Schumer. You do what Lyndon Johnson would do, and I didn't like Lyndon Johnson, but he knew how to run a Senate, and he would go in there and he would like basically blackmail everybody. I'm going to run somebody against you, and your when your seat's up, I'm going to do this to you. I know what woman you're sleeping with. You don't take home to your mama, and boom, 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 boom. He would have gotten all 49 together, and then you go after a few of the fat kids in dodgeball. You go after Susan Collins. You go after Lisa Murkowski. You go after two or three of the Republicans that cannot stand a chance without support. And they're and they're barely getting it now. And you go after the weak ones, and all of a sudden now you got a 52, uh, 48, 49 vote, and and bam, you totally crush the Kavanaugh nomination. He didn't do that. This whole Trump Trump's had twenty six federal circuit court judges approved. That's the most of any president in the history of the country since we started doing this in the eighteen nineties. And boo, no, no Democrats are mad about that. It's it's not the resistance; it's the assistance. They're assisting him. I I understand that, but I feel like if we would have more women, and not necessarily women in politics, but just women in general, and specifically women of color, um, in office, we wouldn't let this fly. Like this would not happen on our watch. And there are right now twenty three elected U.S. senators, women. They're women. Four of them are women of color, and this continues to happen. Because it's a male-dominated field. Politics is male-dominated. It is part of the system that is oppressive and that is corrupt. Yeah, but the Democrats, but the, the Democrats are even worse because out of one side of their mouth, they're saying exactly what you're or saying. They're the same. Yeah, they're exactly. They're we, the same. we don't have an opposition party, and that's why when you run in 2020 and you start, you know, gathering the troops and all that, you ha- you and I know you understand this. You will have the DNC come down on you. And especially if it's the Castro twins, especially if it's, excuse me, um, you know, uh, Lloyd Doggett decides to run. That guy's useless. But if he decides to run for Senate, then all of us. Well, and remember, it's not just me. I mean, we still have to regain control of the state legislators. We still have to gain control of, of Congress, of our city council, our our districts. We have to gain control. When you of say when that. you say we. It cannot happen from the we. I mean, we the people, uh, not we the party. Okay. Ah, yeah, we the people, we have to elect people to represent us, mm-hmm. not people who we worship, mm-hmm. which has been the case, is that these, these people that are running for office, they are glorified, they are treated as celebrities, as if they are above the law, as if everything that they touch is turned into gold. They, uh, people are not, not um, looked at as constituents, they're looked at as fans. They're fans, no, they're constituents, you're supposed to serve them. Like, literally, I saw a post not that long ago on Facebook for an event for uh, O'Rourke. And it said, Beto fans, wear your shirts for door prizes. <laughs> no, like, no, you've got it all backwards. It's, <coughs> we're not fans. We are constituents. And this is what um, these elected officials are looked at as celebrities. It's not the case. No, they not. are elected officials. Right. So we have to regain control as a people, regain control of our state legislatures. Right now, we are two state legislatures away from the GOP calling for a constitutional convention. And what happens when that is called? Um, the whole constitution gets rewritten. So we do need to vote. Hell, if if we, as, as people who are running as Democrats, are saying that we want every vote, then why can't we open up the primaries and also support independent candidates that are running? and invite them on over to debates. That is what democracy is about. Like we are asking for everyone to vote. Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Greens, Independents, it doesn't matter. But when an independent enters the race, they're shunned. Like, how dare you? No, it's democracy. This is how we do it. It's how it's supposed to be done. I support people that are running in the Democratic Party. I support people who are running as Greens. I support people who are running as Independents. 
a lot of them are my best friends. A lot of them are people that I've worked with before on uh, organizing issues, people that I've marched with, people that I've gotten arrested with. And they can be Democrats or Libertarians or Independents or Greens. And if they're running against another Democrat and that independence, um, the independent candidate has a better platform than that Democrat, I'm going to support that independent person so, because I like their platform. Again, I'm loyal to the people. And if these candidates are going to do what's right for the people, I am going to support them. So you mean you're, even you're, if it makes the party upset. So you so you mean you're, you're you're for Americans participating in a in, in a in a democracy that thrives? Is that what you're saying? Oh my God, that's that's isn't it unusual? Wow, it's unusual. That's, yeah, it, yeah, because yeah. I, I keep hearing any blue will do, which is why we have shitheads like Joe Manchin and Chuck Schumer. You know, Nancy Pelosi, you know, Maxine Waters. I'm like, you kidding? And, and and people get pissed at me and they'll go, I'm in Austin, super, you know, pseudo blue town. And the, my, my friends will get pissed with, well, you know, you're, you're really up. You're, you're going to fuck things up for others, you know, because then we, we what, dude? We what? Did you look at Lloyd Doggett's voting record? I mean, am I alone on this? Like, like we what? what? Where's the we in this, man? I don't see anybody... Supporting, you know, lives who are decimated by no work, no money, high chemical abuse, alcoholism. Like you said, vets or 22 vets a day are killing themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, we, 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 we don't, you, you should not kneel for the flo- – really? You want to support the troops? Get them the fuck out of those eight wars that have nothing to do with our freedoms, my rights, nothing. That is all defense well, contracts. I- a trillion dollars A trillion dollars a year we're spending right now. We have fourteen hundred bases. Uh, we have a four, We have fourteen hundred bases that we know of, all over the world. We're in every country on Earth. We are in every. You know how many, in the last, you know how many bases that in the last two years we've spent two point four trillion dollars uh-huh. in two years. In two years, and we and, 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 and this is the, this is the thing: the assistance, not the resistance. The assistance. The first year that Cheeto Jesus is in office, the Democrats, like every one of them, except for like three people lay down and they gave him 80 billion more than he was asking for on his defense budget. But I thought he was crazy. He's crazy. You can't, you, he's crazy. Really? He's crazy. But you gave him 80 billion dollars to buy more firecrackers. It, it, where's the logic in that? Well, continuing to fund the wars without an exit plan is also very irresponsible, but we know that their loyalty isn't to our troops and isn't to our constitution, isn't to the people of this country. Right. Their loyalty is to, and their allegiance is to, um, to the corporate interests that want to go and take those uh, resources from that land and from those people that are living in, the, in those countries. Yeah. So we, we need to definitely be more awake right now. I think, um, it's very difficult because there's a lot of distractions, but right now the focus is Trump, Trump, Trump. And yes, Trump is a is a problem, but he's a symptom of an even bigger Thank problem. You. And once we start addressing what those bigger issues are, those bigger problems, then we can possibly start off fresh next time around. Well, and here's the thing. It, I, 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 wish, I wish it was just Trump, Trump, Trump. It's not because there's a lot of Trump to be pissed at. It's Russia, Russia, Russia. Yes. Yeah. And no one's and no one's questioning why Israel is whispering in his ear, and the Saudi Arabians are cutting checks. Th- th- there's your for- there's your foreign policy in the Mideast problem. We're taking our marching orders from Israel, and the Saudi Arabians are cutting checks. I, why why are we listening to these guys and committing our blood and treasure in those areas? I mean, what what have you heard on the ground that is going to make your race harder? Because you're going to run 2020. I want to get your website out here too. We, we got we got some time, but um. What are you hearing on the ground that tells you that, you know, this corporatocracy business, I'm pessimistic. I think we're stuck with it longer than most people want to admit. But what are you hearing on the ground that is um, information for you to use, like, against these guys? Like, like, like what are you hearing on the ground? Like, Because it, it's not a conspiracy. It's for real. Well, people definitely uh, want someone to vote for, not someone to vote against. Mm-hmm and someone who is going to continuously push these issues and legislate effectively, not just uh, do grandstanding, which is something I oppose as grandstanding. Um, they want people who are going to be out there in the trenches, which I already have. I've been in it for a while. But someone who is relatable, someone that they can, can easily approach. And for me, people approach me all the time. 
they recognize me. And I, according to the Texas Tribune, remember, people only voted for me because of my last name, but they didn't know me. Well, guess what? That theory has been blown out of the water because everywhere I go, people stop and they say, oh, my gosh, you're Seymour Hernandez. I'm in the valley in Brownsville protesting the family separation. And people stop me and they recognize me because, oh, my gosh, you're Seymour Hernandez. And remember, they only voted for me because of my last name. They didn't know my face. So people know who I am. They know what I've been doing. They know that I'm active. Um, we have a lot of other organizations and communities that we have been working with across the state of Texas. They don't want someone who they are doubt, doubting in Congress. They want someone they can trust. And no amount of money, as, as we know from the primary, because O'Rourke spent $4.8 million, I spent $4,000. No amount of money can buy that trust. It can buy propaganda. It can buy gimmicks. Hell, I can buy bumper stickers with slogans that you put on the back of your car, but it cannot buy trust. And I am out there constantly, continuously earning people's trust through my words, followed by my actions. So I'm not concerned about the corporate interests coming in and trying to um, outdo me in fundraising because I can outdo those people in voting compared to their, the, the money that they're spending in their campaigns. All right. So that is my, my ground game is continuing to do the work that I'm doing, organizing um, on the ground, keeping it low key as I have been um, and not, not buying into those gimmicks that uh, usual campaign people tell you or, or campaign consultants tell you to do the best advice I've gotten from um campaign consultants, according to them, this is the best advice I could give you, drop out of the race. I say no. I follow my intuition. I follow my instinct. I, I follow my humanity. And I earn people's trust. And I, and I continue to do that because it has not led me astray at all. And ground game-wise, all I know is getting out there early, getting my name out there early, which is already spreading like a grass fire. Good. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chuck Schumer can come in Heck, if for some reason or work loses and he wants to run again in 2020, all I know is uh, he better watch out. But actually, he already came out and supported me um, in my 2020 race. Now, is he's already come out and said that he is going to support? And me. then, real quick, is um, is O'Rourke on the ballot for uh, Congress or House of Representatives is he, as a representative? Is he on the uh, congressional ballot ballot for 2018 as well? That is a negative. He he's not. No. So if he, he has so if endorsed he, another candidate. So if he loses, he's out. Correct. So he okay. So like a lot of these guys, they'll they'll double dip. They'll keep their name on the ballot for their current seat while they're running for the next seat. So he's he's not on the ballot as a as a congressman. He's not on the ballot, which I um, was surprised because again I thought he would keep that seat as a safety net. But a few years ago, he signed his uh, uh, a commitment that he would not seek. A, a um, another term. So once this term was up, that was it. Oh, regardless, so regardless of the Senate, not, he was out. He was in. He was done in three terms. Well, he's done three terms in Congress. Okay, but so now I'm sorry in the House of Representatives. Right, but he was he committed himself to three terms in the House, and that was it. Okay, yes. well I respect that. Okay, okay. And, and two terms in the Senate. Well, but but, but he's so got to win if, the Senate. But but, but he but he's not but he's not doing the safety net. Is my question. Correct. Right, okay, he's I respect not. that. So that's, that's when I'm like, okay, this guy is someone who is going to take these things seriously and he's putting things on the table that most people would not. Right. And um, I, I actually <clears throat> um, set the bar in Texas for how we talk about politics. That's something that O'Rourke had admitted before he brought me up on stage last week on Saturday. Mm -hmm. That Not this week, though, the following week, the week before, mm -hmm, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, he introduced me. He said, someone who is not in office yet, but she will be soon. And she changed the conversation in the state of Texas on how we talk about the issues. Um, he, he, he talked about my platform and my campaign forcing politicians in Texas to talk about the issues. Wow. Now that, that is game changing. That's awesome. That's uh, awesome. For some people, especially for someone who's never run for office. I, I changed the way people address politics in Texas. As a nobody, but see, but really. don't use that term. And I, I, I know what you mean, but but don't use that term. <laughs> but, but, you know, but, but you know why? Because and this is the thing, I, I find this with with the left. I find this with the right. More and more and more, we're getting divorced from compassion. More and more, 
So like, I don't care if you're a scientist or a super right wing Christian, right? These people, mm-hmm. these people are more and more getting divorced from their own compassion. Like if, if you can tell me with a straight face, it's okay to cage kids. Fuck you. You know, and then if it, well, you know that it's not right. It, it, you, you know, as a human being, you don't feel that. But you're buying into your party crap, right? Mm-hmm. Or if, if you're going to give me some super clinical, like I got a lot of sciencey friends, and sometimes they'll get a super clinical about whatever. And, you know, well, really mm-hmm. w- what it is, it's just the chemical reaction in the brain. Well, go fuck yourself. That's how I feel, okay? Have some compassion. Right. And we, we're, we, are, we have been losing that, and it's gotten worse in the last five, eight years. Way worse. We, we, right. we bought into this meritocracy stuff that, the 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 neoliberal experiment starting with really Ronald Reagan going all the way through Bush mm-hmm. and Clinton and it, it's just been an abject failure based on this fake meritocracy ignoring the numbers cuz only 20% of people try college no one no one wants to admit that those numbers haven't changed in 45 years only 20% of the population tries college less graduate and even fewer go on to postgraduate work so what's for the rest mm-hmm. Right. We took away those trainings. We took away vocational training. We took away those jobs. I mean, I, I, I went I went I grew up in I grew up in I grew up in a, in a in a factory town. Anybody that knows where Southgate, California is up until about the mid 80s. We had jobs there, man. We had General Motors. We had Bethlehem Steel. We had Jerkinson Steel. All these places were employing like a thousand, two thousand people at a time. Everyone's dad was like middle, lower middle class, whatever. But they they had they're making like nine bucks an hour in the seventies when the minimum wage was a dollar (laughs) 10, you know, and he had insurance and you could afford to take your family on vacations and God have a second car and your wife did not have to work or or the husband didn't have to work if the wife was working at mobile as an expediter. I mean, that's the kind of jobs that were down in South central South LA all gone. Right. But when politics are concerned, when I mean, I mean, nobody as is in the patriarchy labels me as a nobody because I don't have political experience because I don't have money to contribute. I'm not a big money donor. But to the political patriarchy, the the political system, I am a nobody. But I change the way we talk about it. I change the way that we address issues. Sure. Hell, I even change the narrative as, you know, money, money, money is, is how you get elected. No, that is not how you get elected. You talk about the issues. You have to earn people's trust. It's not how much money you have in your coffers or how much money you can spend in ads. It's traveling, doing the hard work, doing work that um, you yourself can do and you will do if you have to and are more than willing to, doing, doing it side by side with volunteers that are out there door knocking and block walking and phone banking. You know, they that that's equity right there. Absolutely it is. You're you're putting your own blood, sweat and tears in this campaign. And that is how we changed it. We changed the narrative on how we talk about things. We changed the way that it's addressed and let's not focus on name recognition and how much money you can raise. Let's talk about the issues. Let's talk about legislation. Let's talk about how we are still in poverty and we're still being incarcerated at mass rates because we're people of color or that we are spending um, money in wars when we could be investing it in our infrastructure and getting clean water from the ocean through desalination process and reverse osmosis and putting that clean filtered water in places that are drought, that are drought prone Mm -hmm. in places that don't have clean water like Flint, Michigan by revamping the entire infrastructure to get them clean water by pushing policies, um, that will strengthen the EPA, but also reprimand people in office that are um, benefiting from pollution and from uh, the corruption in in our in our government to favor corporate corporations. So these are things that that we have to continue talking about and making sure that we put the people's interests first, which beats out money in politics and name recognition any day. Absolutely. Well, listen, Malcolm X had no education technically. You know, he he came out of nowhere and yeah, Elijah Muhammad gave him a position, but he rose to the occasion and he led. You're leading. You're leading. And clearly and clearly you read and leaders read. You know, we don't do that anymore. The printed word is dying. True story. <laughs> Seriously. And I, 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 well, I can tell you. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That, no, no. No, you know, so I can tell you what. Tell me. All right. So I can tell you that I. Our race was the first one to come up in the primary. And much like other races where other women were running against other men who had a lot of money, 
our race went unignored. I had no media coverage, no press, no cameras following me around and, and filming me swimming in water and rescuing people out of, out of Hurricane Harvey. <laughs> they didn't film me getting arrested at the railroad commissioner's office in Austin while I was protesting their uh, gas and permits that they keep issuing and continue to frack and pollute our, our water, our air, our schools. They don't film that. They what, what we did, what we accomplished in our campaign as the first indigenous Latina, Latinx woman running ever in the state of Texas history for United States Senate was not heard of. Our, the amount of votes that we, what we brought in, that was never heard of. How much we spent was never reported. Um, races like mine went unnoticed. Much like Kathy Myers' race went unnoticed. And all the other races were overshadowed by... Um, by someone else in New York who ran for office, you know, and I was the first race to run and the first Latina, the first indigenous woman, the first one to push the issues on politics, the first to get openly democratic socialist candidate or openly democratic socialist member running for United States candidate Mm -hmm. on a democratic ticket. But nobody talks about that. It's, what we do, what we've accomplished in our individual races, whether it's here in Texas or in Wisconsin or Julia Salazar in New York for her house seat, those are not reported the way they should be. They're not going to be, they're not going to be, they're not, they're they're not, they should be. We should get the they're not going to be reco- reported in the mainstream press. It, it, listen, we, we, well, we, they said the revolution is not going to be televised. You're goddamn right. And that's the thing. And so, and that's why, <laughs> that's why people, you know, dig shows like mine and, and everyone else that like my heroes, guys like Jimmy Dore, Lee Camp, people like that, because they know that they're getting bullshitted. You know, when listen, and let like, me tell you that Lee Camp was the first one to interview me on a broader right. platform. We have Tim Black who interviewed me as well, right. but I'm still waiting on shows like on shows like Jimmy Dore to call me and ask me about what I think about the Texas Senate. And, mean, and meanwhile, he's wait, and meanwhile he's waiting on Bernie Sanders and, and cue the crickets because Bernie's never going to come on that show. You know, <laughs> Bernie's never going to come on that show, man. I mean, he just had Tulsi Gabbard on last week, and the, Bernie's never going to come on that show. Because he's got to answer, he's got too much to answer for. Because he's been spending the last two years, he's well, been spending the last two years sheepdogging people into this decrepit, bullshit, dead party. It's a fucking dead frat. The DNC is dead. The GOP is next. And anybody who wants to sit there and give me this two party system, you know, a third party can't win. Blah, 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 blah. Listen, we go to ranked choice voting. You know, get rid of the electoral college. Everyone's like freaking out. Well, then the then California and New York will pick the president. Get rid of the electoral college. Have ranked choice voting, mm-hmm. and guess what? Now Wisconsin Correct. and Kansas, they could pick the president too, and and it's all even and well, all fair. Let's, let's also talk about automatic voter registration. You know, let's let's make sure we do that and incentivize voting mm-hmm. by giving people the day off, a national vacation, so you can go and right. vote. Right. Not make not make it so and, hard. and let people that are behind bars incarcerated cast their vote too, because. Their lives matter, especially if they're behind bars, and we're continuously passing laws that affect their lives even behind bars. Right. We're the largest penal colony. You know, the, these are things that no one talks about. We're the largest penal. We're, uh, the, lar- in the, we're the largest penal colony in the world right now. We have twenty five percent of the world's prisoners. We're five percent of the world's population, and half those guys and half right. those guys are in for marijuana. Not ninety percent of drug arrests, which is half the arrests in the United States, are possession only. Pos- possession mm-hmm. only, which means. You should be checking these guys in maybe rehab, depending on the drugs. I don't think pot is a rehabable offense, but, uh, you know, just whatever. You shouldn't be putting them in prison, all right? But if you're the private prison business and you need someone to make Nikes and Adidas and AT&T funds, then, and Victoria's Secret underwear, by the way, uh, yeah. a, a lot of that shit gets made in prisons. And, you know, it's yeah. become a, a total industry. And, and that's a whole nother hour we could do. But, I mean, everything you're saying is powerful. And this is why you're... Kicking ass and taking names, and this is why I'm I'm really fortunate to know you. So we're gonna. Well, and this is why people are, are calling me, asking me for advice, and I am doing as much as I can to work with other people in Congress and leadership positions and in indigenous tribes and people who are traveling to the UN and talking about these issues that are important and getting my perspective on these uh, these issues to present it to other people in leadership. And I'm, I look forward to uh, challenging 
um, anyone else who wants to come up against me in the Democratic Party um, for United States Senate nomination against John Cornyn, I welcome it. Well, here's the thing. And, and, and as we wrap up, I will say this. If they do, they have got to have the bona fides. They have got to have your credentials. They have got to be saying what you are saying as strong as you're saying it. Not, we'll look into it. We'll check into it. Let me see what Monsanto has to say about that. It's it's done. It's it's incrementalism is over. The incremental train is right. over. Um, listen, on that note, I gotta I gotta start wrapping this up. Uh, do me a favor, really quick. Let people know what your website is. I'm gonna also post it in the uh, as a link in the body of the description of this show. But um, wh- what's your website? Where can, where where else can we find you besides Facebook? Well, you can find me on CrowdPack and just look up SEMA for Texas, S-E-M-A-F-O-R-T-E-X-A-S, also at SEMAfortexas.com. I also have a GoFundMe uh, page. It's called No Corn in Around 2020, <laughs> the neat little hashtag. That's good. Yeah, well, I had to. It, it was just needed. It was easy. It's a layup. Because <laughs> we have loose crews and lying ten, like no corn in around yeah, that, in 2020. That, that, that's a layup. You, you, you would be, you'd be sitting if you didn't. Right. Um, and, you know, just find me on Twitter at underscore Seema Hernandez underscore. Or just type in Seema and you'll find my face at a podium with the label on the bottom, Democracy Now. Um, so just, you know, hit me up, find me where you can. And we're still revamping the website every day adding some new gizmo to it so that people can sign up to host a, a party or to host a, an event at their house or at a barbecue. It doesn't matter. Bring on the tofu, bring on the silicon, and bring on the dyed hair. Awesome. I, I welcome told. all of it. I welcome all of it. <laughs> yes. Well, I welcome everyone. Folks, my guest has been Seema Hernandez. Uh, she is going to be running, and I th- I th- I'm not sure if media-wise I can be the first to announce this, for twenty in 2020. Uh, against John Cornyn, the uh, Texas incumbent uh, Republican senator in Texas. Uh, As always, uh, phenomenal to have you on. Thank you so much for coming on. And guys, again, uh, patreon.com forward slash the bitter truth. If you want to be a bitter pill, um, you can find me on that. You can find me on Facebook, Abdelhadi. You can also find my Twitter handle at this is the deal on Twitter. And uh, that's about it. And listen, guys, if this stuff makes you uncomfortable, it's supposed to sleep tight. What is